Okay, guys, uh, welcome back to Educating the Modern. In this episode, we are going to start part one of the basics of making your own alcohol. There gotta be a better way than this. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna definitely turn this into a series, part one, two, three, four, whatever, however many it takes, because there is a lot of knowledge that I am fixing to dump on you. And if I did it all in one video, it'd be like a stupid 20 minute video. Everybody would get tired of it. So here it goes. First off, the very basics. Uh, a lot of people want to tell you how to make like a beer or how to make moonshine and they give you a recipe for it. Well, in all of my learnings, uh, I, find, I find that it's a, a lot easier for someone to digest the basic principles first. And so that's what I'm going to do. And we're going to focus not on beer because as odd as it seems, beer is actually more complicated than liquor. So, all right. And this also doubles for fuel. All right. So, and, and making this stuff on, on your own at home is going to be illegal. So I'm not suggesting that you do it. Um, uh, but knowledge is not illegal. So... I'm going to give you some. All right. The very basics of it are that all alcohol is made sort of the same. Um, the, what you do is you take some sort of edible plant, right, uh, that has starches. Like um, onions probably wouldn't work very good. But let's keep it simple, all right? You got your corn, your rice, rice potatoes, um, anything that has starch content that will break down into sugar. You could literally use bread because bread is wheat and it would break down. I'm not saying that this stuff would be good, but uh, let's say it was a Holocaust situation. Any food scraps that have starch in them will rot down. Compostable material that have starches will rot down and break down into the sugars and the fermenting process can be started on nearly nearly all vegetables. Uh, so, but let's uh, get back on topic. Here we go. So, you've got your basic, like, uh, moonshines, um, pretty much any whiskey uh, except for rye whiskeys, it's going to be made with your main ingredient is going to be corn. Now, there are a lot of things that you can do to this process that I'm talking about to make it better. However, there aren't too many things that you can do to actually screw it up. So, uh, so you know, as you're playing around with this, you learn more things. Like you learn that whole corn like this that's in this picture. Um, isn't the best thing to use. You want to use cracked corn or rolled corn. Basically, if you imagine one of those kernels, if it's cracked up in about six or eight pieces, that's probably best. And the only reason is because it means that those starches more easily break down. All right. Um, rye here is uh, another grain. It's just a typical grain. Uh, now this one is is quite unique. I really like rye because whenever you add rye to, uh, let's say you're making a bourbon, right? Bourbon just has to be more than 50% corn, right? Uh, so you can add anything else you want. You could add bananas in there, right? Whatever. But um, the, the 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 rye is particularly nice because it really works to smooth out your drink. So it, it smooths it, less of a harsh bite to it. All right, the other thing, like uh, uh, you got this right here, sugar cane. If you use this, there are a couple of different ways you could do it. You could squeeze all the juices out of it, all right? 
You could um, buy uh, sugarcane nectar, whatever. Um, uh, you could, a few different ways you could do it. But this right here is what's used to make rum, right? All of it's the same. Uh, orange juice, I don't know if you would be very successful in using that because of the citric acid, but like apple juice, no problem. You can just, the apple juice you buy in a store, no problem. You can take that and you can allow it to ferment and you have just made brandy. It's just that simple.